life, sex, goals, and oh, hell no, this is Midlife Craving. Cheers, bitches. It's the season two finale. Zach is back. The bitch is back in the house. <laughs> Let's get it on. The last episode was so much fun. It was so funny. I seriously, when I was editing, I couldn't stop laughing either. My eyes were getting watery again. I'm like, wow, we just could not get it together. No, the it was Angry too much Pirate fun. had me. I When I was listening to it, I was cooking dinner and I had to stop <laughs> because I just, I couldn't focus on what I was doing. It was so funny. So a lot of my listeners sent me new terms. <laughs> so we are definitely going to have to have another episode next season of it. Yes, it's yes. just so much. And start it's collecting now. Okay. Okay. So listen to this one. It's called, and I, I actually was like, oh, this sounds familiar. <laughs> The Harlem struggle. <laughs> when a man receives head from a person, male or female, and shoves his dick down their throat, locking his legs behind the recipient's head to keep it in that condition, and subsequently cuts off airflow, the gag reflex activates, and the recipient of the Harlem struggle chokes on it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like most of these are like ways to either lose your dick or... Or get broken up with. Right. <laughs> the Harlem struggle makes it more pleasurable to the man as this choking can induce sensations that make the throat tighter. I actually, that sounds hot to me. Um, I kind of, I, I think I'm going to try this. Well, I mean, you I like, like my throat fucked. Anyway. I like to choke on cock. Um, you know, what's funny. One of my good friends, she knows who she is. She said, there's no crying. <laughs> She's like, the only crying tears are, that are going to be shed is from choking on too much cock. Right. And I was like, I fucking love you. <laughs> Okay, the next one someone sent. This is really gross, but I have to share. Most of them If I'm exposed, you're not exposed. Okay, (laughs) the soggy biscuit. I'm done. I'm already out. It's time to go. (laughs) Okay, the soggy biscuit, also known as the ookie kookie, limp biscuit, wet biscuit, shoot the cookie, jizz cut, or come on a cookie, (laughs) is a male group masturbation activity in which the participants stand around a biscuit in the UK or a cookie in the US masturbating and ejaculating onto it. The last person to finish must eat the biscuit. <laughs> oh no. So, so Adrian's oh number one God. fantasy for next season <laughs> is the soggy biscuit. Uh Anyway, there's so many fucking words, and I can't wait to do another episode with you. And I think it's important to note that we didn't compare lists. No, we and we found not one, not one duplicative. Similar. I know. That was amazing. Yeah, I saw a lot of the ones that you had looked up, but uh-huh. I was like, that's gross. And like, the, I'm not the, sharing that. Yeah, like the, the jizz <laughs> chip or something. Like, no, no, I'm not about that life. Oh my God. Uh, I, I, It's funny to me. So next time we'll do the same thing. We'll just go in blind because the reaction is the best part. I don't oh know God, what you're yes. going to fucking say, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, all right. So it's the season finale. I think it'd be fun to revisit, you know, the last. 16 oh, 18 episodes and just go through them and talk about you know this last season of my life you know it's funny i talk about my show and the season of my show when really this it's my fucking life i mean you literally have a digital like audio recording yes you don't have a you don't have a picture book but you have an audio recording like dear here, diary here grandkids look and see what grandma was doing 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord that's a oh people always ask me like what's your show about and i'm like oh um Turning 40 and life and a lot of sex and life mm-hmm. and SFW and life. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm usually like throwing it in between there what it's really all about. But I don't know. My show is not all about sex. Yes, a lot of it because I'm an info and I fucking love it. But it's a lot about growth confidence, living your best life, being authentic, because that's what I'm doing for the first time ever. You have some life life lessons thrown in there. Yeah, right. You know, my episodes when I have you and Uncle Mo and Katina, those are, I feel like, where you really get to see a different side of me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Many sides. (laughs) (laughs) And I've seen most of them. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So it started at the end of last summer. Episode 19, my 37 minute, 19 second orgasm, because it was just like an explosion of just literally a cum dump. Yes, yes. Of all the shit that I was up to over the break, getting COVID, getting stuck in the Bahamas. I swear to God, like fucking the local. It, that to me still feels like a dream. Even when I think about it, like not the bill, the, the, the bill I had to pay. Yeah, the that was very into a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The $6,000 bill I had to pay for that shit. That wasn't, that feels real. But it was so wild what I went through. Sometimes I look at you know, photos on my phone or on video and I'm like, wow, like that happened. That was <laughs> so really fucking crazy. Yeah. And then I think 
I don't know, after the last spring and doing my 60 day no D diet and then the summer and really taking a lot of time. Episode 20 was 40 free and fucking thriving. You know, I turned 40, which is a pretty big birthday. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for the first time ever, and you can almost hear it in my voice in that episode. I was finally happy. Yeah. There was a lot of relief. There was a lot of all the healing had taken place. I was in a really good spot where I wasn't doing anything negative, like all the toxic shit in my life was gone. Um, I was fully healed after my relationship with Prince Charming. Mm. You know, uh, it was when I really started to find myself. Yeah. Uh, Episode 21 was all about sex toys. You know, I love my sex toys. And I love referring people to that episode because I share how I use the toys, the settings I love. I feel like that should be like a season regular from now on. Like you test out new sex toys and be like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Here are the, the pros and cons. You yeah. want lube? Use this, not that. That's you know, I should do that uh, next season. I'll have a, an entire episode. I mean, over. that's like there's a whole TikTok channel with like I buy this crazy shit so you don't have to. Right, right. All you right, I'll, I'll write it down. Girl. There you go. I am the sex toy you girl. Are, you <laughs> I have are. sex toys everywhere. <laughs> okay, and then a huge monumental shift occurred in my life on episode 22, Living the Lifestyle, when I met Kat and Ams from Two Hot Wives podcast. That was a great, you could just tell, like, you were, like, so hungry, but for knowledge, and you were, like, that was probably the best interview you had done, because you weren't in, you weren't in control of the answers. Yeah. So it was just, it was, like, for me, like, I peripherally knew about that, mm-hmm. but I didn't know what all it entailed, and, like, as a listener of somebody who may or may not even be in into that type of mm-hmm. thing, it was just very educational, but still very entertaining. Yeah, and they were like so calm, cool, and collected about it. You can tell like they were like, you see that Genuine. one t- right? one TikTok is like at the drop of a hat. What could you give a speech about for like five minutes? Like that was them. Like they they were ready to go. They. They knew the assignment and they were prepared. Yeah. So listen, listen to their podcast, Two Hot Wives. Cat and Ams are amazing. Mr. Cat, Mr. Ams, they welcomed me into their world and my life changed. And like I'm telling you, you're exactly right. They are so incredibly knowledgeable. They share so much education on the lifestyle and they're so passionate about it, well, of they, course. They destigmatize it a lot. Yes. I love that. Right. So. Huge life shift when that occurred. Yes. Fun fact, Kat actually emailed me when I was stuck in the Bahamas. Mm. And it was funny because she was like, Adrian and I contemplated, like, should I send it to her? And her email really did, like, I remember it, like, made my day. I remembered I have a life that's outside of this fucking hotel room uh, because it was very isolating there. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure. I can't do time, by the way. This bitch ain't doing time. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not, not breaking any laws. Nope. I'm not. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Plus, I'd be holding somebody's pocket real quick. I can't be in a cage. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I have a 3,000 3, square foot house, which is me and my husband. Like, I need spaces to go. Right, right. So, anyway, I'm so glad that she did. And uh, my relationship with them has... This oh, this sounds so cheesy. It's flourished and it's grown so much. And now, you know, I love them both so much. And mm. I'm so happy that I'm a part of their lives as well. So episode 22, Living the Lifestyle with Kat Nams from Two Hot Wives Podcast. Epic, monumental shift in my life, no doubt. So then episode 23, I was with Katina and talked about breaking up. Because I have been going through some things, right? You... <laughs> Shocking. But, you know, one of the things I really, I was talking about breadcrumbing. Mm-hmm. Some of our, uh, Prince Charming left things here. And I was oh, like, I we, that, yeah. it was just like the never ending breakup. And I was like, listen, like, and I no disrespect, but like I had to move on. And I was like, I can't keep having this like, you know, oh, your stuff is here. And then your mail is getting delivered here. And then this package arrived. And then, oh, you're still on my, you know, easy pass. And I'm like, fuck like i, I just like wanted to have a clean break than breaking up with him <laughs> yes i know so it was you know i shared my knowledge on going through that breakup which was painful too mm-hmm. at the same time i'm like i just wanted well, to you were still end. living it and then so like right having it be a teachable moment yeah. yes so then the next episode was with crazy michelle <laughs> sex capades <laughs> and that was probably one of the most fun and hysterical not as funny as ours with the urban dictionary discoveries but i know but the stories that she shared 
and I also remembered things that I did, like that fucking cocaine boat ride, and fucking <laughs> like, and she's fallen off a you know sex swing on her door. I mean, really funny, good stuff. So, and I just felt like I was back. You know, yeah. I had gone through. I had, I had talked about the serious shit, and now was like, all right, back to sex. Yeah, like, <laughs> back to the ba- fun back stuff. Back to the good stuff. Yes. Uh, episode twenty eight. I had Beth, the marriage counselor, on, and I thought she really helped me look inside of myself. Like it was one of those episodes where you learn that if you want to change your environment, it really begins within. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I really, she taught me a lot, like her three-step process. I really appreciated that. So it was also different too, to have that point of view, you know? So, and I hope that she helped a lot of my listeners as well. Cause most of my listeners are in relationships or married, mm-hmm. you know, or newly single. And again, I feel like that would be like a good, like when you, when you have like a sex therapist come on, you know, a lot of your listeners are like, Hey, me and my partner had this problem. And you can give advice, but it would be great for like a, a professional to be like, yes. hey, this is how you spice things up. Like, mm-hmm. And that's what I think people enjoy about your show is it's not just like, hey, Adrian's out fucking some guy th- today. Right. It's like, <laughs> now let's bring that back and have like a deep and a introspective moment. Right. And so you kind of get the highs, lows and everything in between. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then after, you know, talking about those sexcapades, I was just episode 25. I was just so tired of like the dating apps. I was still, I think I was still on Tinder. No, I wasn't. I was only on Tinder for when I was at Virginia beach, but it was field. I was on field yeah. app and I was just like, look, I'm done. Like I'm fucking done with this shit. And then that's when I met Dr. B. I actually remember um, you telling me that like I'm signing off of this. And then like, Five seconds later, it's like, I met somebody. Yeah, I know, Dr. B. Uh, and that's when I really started expanding my sexual, I don't know what the word is here. That's when I really started just growing sexually. I feel like you started living out the fantasies that you'd yes, only thought about. Yes, yes, yes. So let's see. It's funny because like I'm trying to talk about all these episodes in, in order. It's tough to do because so much stuff happened. So much stuff overlaps, uh, overlapped. But, you know, I was seeing Dr. B and we did the milking table. I saw the video. That was <laughs> <laughs> that was super hot. And then also got the sex swing. And, you know, so episodes 26 and 27, shit, 25, 26, 27. It was really just a lot of fun with Baywatch, a lot of fun with Dr. B, the milking table, the sex swing. And then, oh, I kissed a girl. And you liked it. Yes, I did. So there was just a lot well, of these fun. These were all the precursors leading up to the lifestyle event. Yes. Because it's like yes. you, were, you were breaking down your inhibitions yep. and finding, tiptoeing around what you like before you're like, deep end, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know me, both feet. Yes. <laughs> very, very. That's, that's my fucking way. And then right into episode 29 where I had my favorite TikToker of all time. And I started, you know, building a relationship with daddy Nate Mm. from let's shag podcast. I really love him. And that whole episode was full of tips. You know, I love playing just the tip. And that episode had so many amazing sex tips. What was your favorite tip he gave you? Can I tell you, he actually kind of changed the way that I fuck every time because I'm a shit talker. No, I know. And I'm famous for being like, you want to come in that pussy, you know, or I'll also like direct them. Like, I want you to come in my face. And he told me, he was like, Adrian, that puts a lot of pressure on them. And I was like, I didn't think about that. No man in my life has ever complained, but now I am much more, what's the word? Cognizant. <laughs> I am much more cognizant over what I'm saying. Cause mm-hmm. I don't want them to get caught up in their head and like, Oh man, she wants me to finish. Cause it's not that I yeah. just, I like talking about it, you know? Um, so I don't do that anymore. Well, I think it's also, a conundrum because it's like you're very submissive mm-hmm. in your actions, mm-hmm. but in your words, you're very dominant. Yes. And then like some guys are like, I don't know what to do. Too many things. <laughs> How do I happen? <laughs> That's exactly what they sound like. <laughs> in their minds. Yes. Yeah, right, 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 right. You know, men, men, simple pleasures. I know. I'm basically a man, so I understand, you know. Yes. But yeah, so I stopped doing that. So, I mean, there's so many tips on there from eating pussy, sucking dick, Lots of good stuff. And then part two is on his show, which mm. was a lot of fun. Um, and then episode 30, I had Lauren back. MILF's reunited yes. and it feels so good. And, you know, let's talk about that. Let's, let's do. Yeah. So it's tough for me because Lauren has always been. She's And I'm not really close with her, mm-hmm. you know. And the first time I ever met her was episode four and she was on my fucking show. Or episode five. I can't remember which one it was. Um, Way back when you were a girl. I, like forever ago. <laughs> and... What sucks is, you know, we started the show, two hot milfs and a telephone, and we were both like all in for it. And I, you know, I said, I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? And then after like the fourth episode, she was like, I can't do this anymore. 
And I'm like, fuck. And then, you know. She clam jam you? Yeah. Like, I'm like, girl, we were on to something. This could have been amazing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I know she has life shit going on. But what's crazy is she blocked me. Uh, blocked me on all social media. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, did I do something? I didn't fucking do anything. Um, and you know, so part of me is like, I shouldn't share stuff like that, but it's like, what the fuck? Well, you, you know, know, a lot of people don't like feeling like they have disappointed somebody. Yeah. And instead of dealing with that, they're like, well, if I can't see them, I can't feel. The thing is, there was no hard feelings for me. You None whatsoever. Yeah, I, mean, I, I feel like the woman who like, was sleeping with your husband, you're like, okay. Like, I don't feel like you're that, the type of person to get mad about things. Um, I was sending that bitch a thank you card. <laughs> right? Wow, well, was every anniversary right? of when you found out. That was my get out of jail free card. What are you telling? That was the best day of my life. <laughs> yeah, right? Free at last. Free at last. Great God Almighty. Free at last. Like, I was quoting. Yeah, I was like, woo. Was sitting in a fucking diaper. I don't know if I've ever. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever shared that story on my show. I mean, I feel like you have to give some context. To right, that. Like, a this bitch just wears a diaper. <laughs> yes, we're laugh. I'm well, around you because we're laughing so hard. Actually, I pee my pants all the time. Oh my god, can we talk about how you fell last weekend? No, we oh can't. No, we cannot. <laughs> I didn't go fall. Off. I slipped. <laughs> you fucking I, they, I was not. Shit. I was not was ass great. of a tin cup. I literally great. just slipped, uh-huh. and it was graceful, and I picked myself uh-huh. up like a fucking boss. And I peed my pants a little bit, which is well, funny. <laughs> you and your 40-year-old pussy. There you go. That's what you get for it. I had a baby. It's something I think most women can Look, fucking understand. that is 10 years ago. We're talking about <laughs> Yeah, now. yeah. I got a prolapsed <laughs> uterus and shit. God. Not prolapsed. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, no, so I had had a tummy tuck March seventh and March 9th is when I was like sitting in a chair. I wasn't wearing a diaper because I was like peeing in my fucking pants. It she, was but she was also lying on a shower curtain line of <laughs> I, I know this story. I And I was it. in and I was in a moo moo. <laughs> it was such a look. God. So and, you, this is what she'll be like in twenty years. Right. Plastic sheets, diaper <laughs> moo moo. Hey, that tummy tuck was the best thing I ever fucking did. Uh, and it was for just the, you know, the fluid. Like, he's like, you know, wear this. It helps. I was I was able to go to the bathroom. But it's, it is fucking comical as hell. I'm sitting in a chair on a shower curtain wearing a fucking adult depends. And I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's calling this bitch like 24-7. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And I'll never forget. It's funny. I know he's listening right now. So, hey, boo. Remember the day? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never the best forget day of my life. Yeah, I'll never forget. He came upstairs and I was like, hey, yo, so um, look what I found. I was like, wow. And by the way, I was on a high on Percocets too. So I was like, woo. <laughs> and so you being uninhibited anyway, right. even less inhibited on Percocet. Right. Actually, you know what? Actually, what started it was I asked him to take a photo of me. All right, let's get into this. All right. March 7th, I had a Tommy talk. Two days later, I'm sitting there. The year and was 2017. 17. He came up and I was like, hey, take a photo of me. Like, I want to see what I, I look like a fucking mess. Let's remember these days, you know? She likes to know when she looks like a mess. You guys saw the lifestyle before and after. Right, right, right. <laughs> I just wanted to see a photo. So I asked him to make a photo and he was so, his hands were shaking. And like, I said, let me see the picture. And he was like, no. And like the phone like flew across the room. And I was like, why is he acting so weird about his phone? So when he went back downstairs... I logged into my, you know, Verizon account and I was like looking through phone records. I had never done that before, but I was like, who's this? He's talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then I saw like, I forget the last four digits of her phone number, but it was like over and over and over and over again. All going on simultaneously. I called her and it was like, hi, this is, you know, and I was like, oh, so this is a girl. I was like, cool. So he comes upstairs and I was like, so why were you so weird about your phone? Like I was trying to, I was trapping him. Right. And he was like, you know, I was just talking bad about you to a friend saying how you shouldn't have done this and da, 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 da. And I was like, um, nice try. I said Academy award. I was like a for fucking effort, right. but why don't you go back downstairs, gather up the truth, come on back up here and tell me what's good. <laughs> and he was like whiter. He looked like he had seen a ghost. He was sweating, like shaking. And I was just like, yeah, so come on back when you're ready. Anytime. And mind you, I'm on Percocets. I'm like, woo, I'm good. I'm fucking good. Bitch can't stand up straight, but I'm good. And um, he came back upstairs. I'm going to still let you know I'm the boss. Yes, yeah. I'm an an adult diaper, but I'm the fucking boss bitch. He came upstairs. it, It came out. And, you know, it was one thing after another. And I was just like, look. Uh, we're done. We have been done, right? Like he lived in the guest bedroom for years. I'm like, I, to be honest with you, you know, I remember I was, I had been trying to catch him in an affair. Cause I'm like, look, let's, let's get this over with, yeah, you right. know, but you anyway, so, 
Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, our marriage had been over. Uh, so, My yeah. My old Adrian did not like to rip off Band-Aids. I know. Now she does. Yeah, right? Now she's like, rip, rip, motherfucker. Gotta yeah, go. Yeah, I've, I, yeah. You know, it's a lot of lessons learned. And we were together for a long time. But, like, we I hadn't we hadn't been in love with each other for years. Um, he moved to the guest bedroom when my daughter was born. So mm. that was cool. Um, and I just. As any respectable man would. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's what five of the years was for, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't, you don't need to partake in that. What yeah, are you talking right. about? Uh, so anyway, that's how that went down though. Adult diaper. Woo. Went off there. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't even the five minute orgasm. Back, back to my episodes, right into episode 31, where I really found my, I had owned and found my confidence completely, you know, been through so much, healed a ton. And I had uncle Mo back on and we talked all about confidence. I had really owned my core values. I was living by them. Uh, it was a really good episode and I feel like you can, you can hear the confidence in my voice at mm-hmm. that point. Like I had been through so much and healed through so much. Um, so that's one of my favorite episodes because I do believe that confidence is key oh, absolutely. in and out, in and out of the bedroom. Like just in, in general, like not even sexual partners, just people right. who I'm around and like I call friends, they have to be confident people. It just, I know it, it really affects your mood when somebody is like a, Debbie down all I know the, the insecure. I, I don't like the insecurities either. Yeah, it drives no. me nuts. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then episodes 32, 33, and 34, all about the lifestyle party. Like the biggest event over the last year for me, oh, no absolutely. doubt. Um, and then I had Baywatch on, so that was a lot of fun. And then did my solo episode after the party. And then he came back on. That was a great episode too, that sharing all that stuff. Episode, I know. Yeah. I mean, the so fact hot. that, I mean, he was just as open and free about it as you were. Like, I know. The fact that what there was gem. like zero fucks given, he's like, yeah, good bitch squirted in my face 43 <laughs> times. There was a flood. <laughs> I, I flooded her basement. <laughs> <laughs> He's so I, cute. I, I hope cat names really pay their like cleaning professionals <laughs> yeah, well. Right. I know. What's funny is when he was like, yeah, you know, Rainy and I were like, should we clean this up? And they were like, we don't care. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, Go you ahead. ain't there for a long time. You're there for a good time. Pump I know, that's and dump. right. Get out. Mm. God, that was so much fun. I can't wait to go again. You know, like looking back on this entire second season, and I keep saying like of my show, but really it's my fucking life. You oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, you know, I want to take a moment. Speaking of Baywatch, I want to shout him out. Baywatch has been a constant, incredible companion in my life over the last year. Uh, I recon- I've met him after my 60 day no D diet and he has been so much fun. He's been a very safe and happy place for me. Uh, I and think, trust me, I think you have taught that boy some I, things I that he will never forget. <laughs> I know part of me feels kind of bad. I hope I didn't ruin him for life. We'll I, can't, I, I would like to see like in 60 years, him and like the senior citizen center <laughs> telling people like, Dude, at 26, 27, <laughs> I fucked five girls in one night. And they'd be like, I was no, swinging, I was fucking in sex swings. I was, I mean, on his cousin's weight bench and then, you know, got my dick sucked in front of the you know, surveillance cameras, like all <laughs> kinds of shit. Like, but one of the things that Baywatch really taught me was how to be free. To yes. really seriously let yeah. myself live. No fucks to give. No fucks to give. But in a very respectful and responsible way. Yeah. Um, and he was always, he's always down for everything. Um, and I, he allowed me to have a lot of fun while I was healing. Mm-hmm. It was so carefree, you know, he was the escape. You didn't know you needed, but you needed anyway. Yes. Like in his, his free spirit rubbed off on me. Mm-hmm. Like he really, that wasn't the only thing rubbing off, but mm-hmm. his cum tastes so good too. <laughs> Mexican pancake. But <laughs> You know, what Baywatch did for me over this last year is he gave me hope Mm. that, like, I can really be happy again. And, you know, there are no feelings between us aside from a lot of love and a lot of respect. Mm. Um, But he has been such an incredible person in my life. I want nothing but the fucking best for him. I really, really, really do. I can't wait to see what happens to him and to see him, you know, I really hope you get invited to the wedding. I know. <laughs> I know. I just, I right. I'll be like, wink, wink. You're welcome, bitch. <laughs> you right. I did that. I, 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 did I, I that. got him ready I, for you. <laughs> In five years, I want. I need to thank you. Note. But just as much as he was able to explore and have fun with me, it was completely reciprocated with oh, him. Absolutely, yeah. Just, I feel so fucking lucky. So you so feel like Baywatch, he did more for you than you did for him because he did a lot emotionally for you. 
to allow you. Yeah, that he allowed space me to, to be heal. free, yeah. and I was like, "Hey, like I can have fun again." And I don't know. It was just. It was like. You know, it's funny when I talk about like Mr. July, it was like two tickets to paradise, right? Mm -hmm. When I talk about Baywatch, it was, it's just like a freedom tour. Yep. You know what I mean? Like I could like, you know, it's girls gone wild, uh, lifting my shirt and show my titties. Like, and it's just being, and he was, was so, I don't know. It's very, I don't know. Sounds like it it's, allows you to harken back to a time like you were in college and you were very careful. Yeah. Like he's, he's the bomb. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, I just want to say like Baywatch, thank you for always just, just letting me grow and go through all that I did over the last year and just being so fucking awesome. And also, can we talk about the Nobel Peace Prize this man should win for being able to put up with your level of who <laughs> you are? Like, most men can't match that, especially not a man who's, what, 13 years younger than you are? I know, you're right. Yeah. Well, wait, he's 26. I'm 40. What is that? 14. Wow, yeah. Bra fucking O. I know. So. He is just such a gem. Anyway, so big shout out to Baywatch over this last season of my life. He really was... A big part of that. Yes. So another thing I can't say enough of is that this last season of life wouldn't have nearly been as exciting if I wouldn't have met Kat and Ams from Two Hot Wives podcast. Oh, yeah. Literally opened up doors. You were like. Game changing. You didn't even know where to look for the life door. Life changing. They just, they right. busted open for you. I had known about the lifestyle before I've heard about it. Kat and Ams schooled me mm -hmm. in the best way possible. And they welcomed me into their world and I found my tribe. Uh, and, you know, this is the life for me. Like, there is no going back. N ethical non-monogamy will be the only relationship I pursue ever again, for sure. And I just love them and adore them so fucking much. And everyone that I've met there, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm really fucking happy. <laughs> so without them. Um, Literally, you're fucking happy. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> fucking happily. <laughs> yes. All right. And then also, I want to mention my incredible friends, Katina, you, yes. <laughs> Uncle Mo, um, just supporting me through so much shit. Like you three are my like top three, you know, that I'm always talking to all the time and sharing everything with and going through and growing through. Um, and it's been really nice. You know, I'm not perfect. I make a fuck ton of mistakes and you guys never judge me. You love me very much. And I'm very thankful for that. Aww. So I know. <laughs> let's go have a circle jerk. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Uncle Mo would be down for you and Katina, like, just <laughs> taking turns. Yeah. And then without, you know, I also, you know, last but absolutely not least, my listeners, you know, without you guys listening to my show and all the DMs, so much love. You know, yes, I do get disgusting oh, and the funny picks. comments that I get sent, it brightens my day up. Like, right, she'll, right. She'll send me this long message that somebody sent to be like, oh, my God, I, I was know. going through all this and you helped me. And it's amazing, right? I was just going to say, you know. There are some negatives out there. There's a lot of people who judge me. I get a lot of shit, but for every bad message, there's 25 good. Well, and 90% of those bad messages are people just unhappy, miserable, insecure, anyway, miserable so fuck themselves. Them. Thank you. Right? Fuck them hard. But just let, and they let, ain't getting let, fucked hard. Let believe them me. haters be your motivators. Like, I'm so well cash my paycheck when yeah. you listen or not. <laughs> right. So keep listening. Right. <laughs> but it's true. I do have like the best cravers and thank you guys for being here and following along. You know, it's like riding shotgun yeah, right? <laughs> right next to me. All right. It's time for a Q and a end of season two. Ready? Yes. I'm Let's do it. Ready. Okay. <laughs> Questions from Adrian's cravers. Mm -hmm. Y'all, some of these are kind of crazy, but we'll see. <laughs> First one, not so much, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to the juicier ones as, as the list gets shorter. Okay. What are your plans for summer? Plans for summer, uh, taking some time off in August. I'm taking two weeks off. I'm going to go back to Virginia Beach. Ooh, going, uh, going back on Tinder? No, I'm not, going back, I'm not going back on Tinder. I don't know. Maybe. I don't Bumble? know. No, no, no. Going I'm not old doing school that. with OK Cupid? <laughs> no, I'm not doing none of that shit. I actually deleted Field as well. I, I just, I don't, I, it's not my thing. Um, just really, I'm really going to try to get some good downtime this summer. You go to the pool as much as possible. Let's see if I'll get kicked out again. Maybe. I, and if you get kicked out there, I have a pool. Come, we'll get kicked out yeah. of mine. Yeah, we'll go, I'll come get kicked yeah, out of right? yours. <laughs> That's Adrian's goal. How many pools can she get kicked out of this summer? Summer 2022. Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we kind of touched on this a little bit, but how is Baywatch? Like, what's going on in his life now? Baywatch is amazing. You know, he was traveling for the last three weeks. Uh, I talked to him. I like sent him in like Aussie land or something like that, right? No, they ended up, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm like, should I put, I'm not trying to put his business in the streets. Um, he ended up staying stateside. Did you just say you don't want to put his business in the street? I know. You literally <laughs> talked about him 
<laughs> sitting know, on his dick. I know, but like talking about the sex capades that he and I share together is different than talking about his personal life. Oh, true that. It's not my place to tell that story. It's a fine line uh, that I have to, you know, I am, you know me, I'm a habitual line stepper. But when it comes to the respect <laughs> <Not> and <habitual. laughs> the respect and love of those in my life, I got to be real careful. Uh, in short, Baywatch is doing really, really well. I'm really happy for him. Uh, I don't want to put his business. Is he graduating straight. from high school soon? Yeah. Yep. He got his <laughs> diploma. He walks across the stage. <laughs> I sucked his dick after. <laughs> anyway, Baywatch is fucking awesome. As usual. Any lifestyle events coming up? Funny. You should mention that. Uh, of course, you know, actually I ran a 5k with them last weekend in DC. Did you talk um, about actual running guys? Like. Yeah, right now, right. Like you know, it's not just it's not just there's also it is a lifestyle. vanilla events, mm-hmm. right? It's a lifestyle. Uh so then we had a barbecue afterwards. That was a lot of fun. Does anybody get spit roasted? No, it's a it's a vanilla lifestyle party. Okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> but it's funny. I went to my first like truly vanilla party two weeks ago. And it's like that TikTok. It's like, I don't mean to sound like a bitch, but you guys are really boring. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Yeah, this is interesting. Like, even at the vanilla lifestyle events, it's like hugging, winking. You're giving each other eyes. You're like, hi. And everybody in the room is sex positive. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets you and you get them. It's a totally different vibe. But, yeah, there's a meet and greet coming up. Uh, I'll be there. And I think I'm going to go to a concert, the Leg Warmers, next month with a couple. I might might invite some other people. Oh, and I think I'm going to do like a little Botox party, like a gal's night for the lifestyle. I think I'm going to be known as like the beauty babe in the lifestyle. Like I do makeup, I'll do your lashes, and then let's go get Botox together. Just don't ever get skin care, skin care regimens from Adrian. <laughs> 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 Dial soap. You're I was offended, on me. offended when she told me that. <laughs> You're just hating on me. If you knew I'm how much I bitch. spent on my moisturizer for my face, you would faint. I get cum on my face all the time. I'm good. I mean, the, the proteins and lipids, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I mean, I do like Botox. Uh, I like I'm nice almost, makeup. I'm, like, I'm ready. Like, I'm starting to itch. I just got it yesterday. I love it. It's the best. But I am a very simple girl. So when it comes to, like, all that regimen stuff, I don't got time for that. So anyway, so, yes, lots of events coming up. Lots of good times. I cannot. I just love being with them. So. Well, based on the answer from the last question, I feel like I know what the answer to this question is. Okay. Would you do another no D diet? Fuck no. no. <laughs> Actually, no. wait a minute. Wait a minute. I will tell you this. Yes, I would if I found myself in a place where I really need to heal again. Because look, you know me. I'm distracted. I'm dickmatized, right? It run she runs my life. Like the I bitch feel like gets if angry. If you did that again, you would do the Catholic girl style. Like, I'll give a blowjob because it's not real sex. <laughs> Bill Clinton, you <laughs> yeah, mean? Right. Uh no, I I I would do it if I needed to. I feel like it was a really incredible tool to help me heal. So if I ever feel like I was need to heal about you know again, I would do it. But otherwise, fuck no. I'm getting it on. <laughs> Speaking of maybe a no dick or a dick diet, mm-hmm. what happened to Dr. B? We haven't heard about him in a while. You know, it's everybody asks. Everyone's asking me, where's Dr. B? Where's Dr. B? So he's moving. I think he's moving this month. And so I always knew, like, leading up, you know, he's moving. And so when the lifestyle... There was an explanation date. Yes, yes. And Dr. B and I just had incredible sex together. There wasn't any other connection there, right? Uh, And when the lifestyle party happened, you know, when I got a plus one, I mean, of course I wanted to take Baywatch. I'm invested in him. We've mm-hmm. known each other for a long time. Uh, I think of him as well, like a primary partner. he's also been partner. part of your life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, um, so I didn't even think about it. And I do feel Dr. B felt a little bit left out. I don't blame him, right? Like, oh, why didn't she pick feelings, me? Sorry. I don't know. But uh, it just, and it, there was no intention to hurt him. I mean, it's not a dodgeball game. <laughs> right. Like, I was just like, and you're moving. Like, if I'm going to invest with someone in the lifestyle, it's I don't want it to be somebody that's moving. Yeah, a repeatable offender. A what? A repeating offender. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, he started exploring other relationships and so did I. And we kind of just like parted ways. Um, I've had some new things happen recently. And so I'm like, hey, like, I mean, no hard feelings. I mean, he rocked my motherfucking world. And we had some great times together. I don't know. We've kind of just grew apart since the lifestyle party. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Oh, Dr. B. <laughs> Well, good luck. Moving. He's a great guy. Yeah, have fun. He's moving to Florida. Live right. it up. That's the fucking lifestyle capital of the world. Oh yeah, the look villages. for the look for the um. What do they do? They do the fucking loofahs. Look for the loofahs, yes. yep. Doctor B. Yeah. yeah. See, she always cares. <laughs> yeah, I'm always looking out for you. 
Okay, so here's a very sex positive question. Mm-hmm. In doggy style, do you prefer your hair to be pulled or your arms to be pulled behind you? Both. No. <laughs> I was about to say, I saw the TikTok with the spaghetti. I feel like it's. Oh, hard. I do love getting my hair pulled. And you have to make sure you grab at the base oh, of the, the root. root. Absolutely. Yes. Like a grasp, not just like tugging yeah, you, hair. Yes, yeah, not, not a fucking ponytail. Exactly. Yeah. While we're talking about doggy style, I do have a position that I'm dying to try. I have a screenshot in my phone. <laughs> So I'll, I'm standing up. He's behind me, fucking me. And then my hands are behind my back and he has his arm like pulling my elbows back. Right. Mm. But then in addition, he has his, uh, his right hand over my mouth and like arching me back and fucking me hard. What in the yoga position <laughs> are we talking about here? Oh, so it is so hot and I'm dying to try it. So mm, all of that. Mm, Season mm, three. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So speaking of sex, <laughs> I know you don't kink shame. I do. Um, (laughs) But are there any kinks you will not participate in? Furbies. (laughs) I'm not dressing up like an animal and getting fucked in it. (laughs) (laughs) Furbies are those godforsaken toys from the 90s. (laughs) I'd hope you weren't fucking furbies. Fuck, I always say shit wrong. (laughs) Oh my God, furries, yeah. And also, no no shit play. Like, we talked about the Urban Dictionary. It's fucking, I I, I can't. I'm I'm adamantly against most body fluids. Anything that department, no. I will say this: a lot of people have foot fetishes. I'm down for that. You want to rub my feet? You want to massage my feet? You want to suck my wish toes? I could find somebody with a foot fetish. I don't even have like a sexual thing about my feet being like massage, but it is like the best thing in the world. I'm like, right? You massage feet. I'll, I'll suck a dick. When I was in college, I had a guy that was, and it was so hot. By the way, pro move. This is a tip for you. When you're fucking a girl and she has her legs up, and you, you know, like when you're like. Leaning over. I don't know. Like, I'm thinking of the um, office space when he's like, Lumberg's fucking mm-hmm. her and he's holding her foot. Suck her toe a little bit. Ugh. Yes. It was hot. He used to do that. He used to always want to rub my feet, massage my feet, suck my toes. Very into a foot fetish. I have nice feet too, so we can do it. <laughs> well, except for when your toenails fall off, you nasty <laughs> oh <my> bitch. <laughs> that was season one. I got treadmill toe. Oh my <laughs> God. That was fucking hysterical. That was one of the most disgusting. That days was of my one of the life. funniest fucking days ever. I was like, what is the fucking problem? You, you guys were so you upset. You understand, like, it is like, it's not even a fear. It is just like a weird thing. Like, my nail is getting ripped off just like freaks me. Like, the idea of it freaks me the fuck out. I was like, let's go. Like, let's just rip off a whole nail. Like, it's fucking Tuesday. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that. Uh, we, yeah. That's all. <laughs> go ahead. Um, was there anything that you were nervous about in the lifestyle? Oh, man, nervous. I was nervous. It was the expectation of it all. I wanted it to go so well, the party. Mm-hmm. I was a nervous wreck before. I, I f- was. I feel like it was the like line Baywatch from... was like Okay. Oh, Baywatch was like, what's going on with you? He was like, How are you fucking nervous? I was like, I don't know. I just I wanted it to go so well. I wanted not that I'm not confident, but I just I really wanted to make connections. I wanted to had that amazing night and I fucking did. But I was just very, I don't know. I was very nervous about the expectations of it all. I wanted it to go so well. I feel like that's how you are on a lot of things. Like you, you ever seen Rocky Horror Picture Show? Mm-mm. Well, there's a line in there. It's like the anticipation. Yeah. And like, I feel like you build up all the, like, mm-hmm. even when we record, you're like, oh my God, I don't know what we're going to do. Then I'm like, well, we'll just fucking press play and let's find the fuck out. Right. I have high expectations. Yes. For sure. For myself and everyone else around me. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. What has been your most exciting experience in the lifestyle? <sighs> MFM. All day, I mean, every day. I mean, you day. were talking about that. Years. Uh, yes. I've wanted to have a threesome forever. forever. I mean, The day two I met dicks. you, I'm pretty sure it's like, I got divorced yeah. and I want an MFM. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, thank you, Stone Cole, for making all my dreams come true uh, in Pinocchio. I, it was fucking amazing. I'll tell you, getting railed and having a cock in my mouth and like, like, all the noises. Oh my God. It was so hot. I will say Ugh. like, I do have a fantasy about like fucking a guy with a guy fucking me. Like I feel like, mm. cause that was like, it's all the pleasure at, yeah. at the same time. Do it. Fucking do it. Gotta talk to husband. Do <laughs> it. Some of us aren't single. Okay, all right. So now a couple more serious questions. Okay. What has been your favorite moment from the past season? The lifestyle. Events. No, no. Angry pirate. Uh, oh my God. we could not get it together we, i couldn't that was no. so fun uh favorite moments in the last season i i it, the episodes with baywatch 
were awesome. Reliving all those moments. And plus like the foreplay of it all. That was excellent foreplay for us. He destroyed me in that swing afterward. Okay. So the lifestyle episodes. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I love you. Bye. Shocking. <laughs> What is the biggest difference between yourself in this season and last season? That's so easy. I'm healed. Finally. Mm. If you listen to my last season, I was spiraling a little oh, bit. like full on chaos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was, yeah. That's probably an understatement. I feel like your life is still very chaotic, but in very different ways. It's not chaotic because of men. Yeah. Right. There's like none of that. just because of normal life shit. Like I know. Right. You have a daughter, an ex-husband, you work. Right. Like there's always shit going I'm yeah. always, yeah, I'm always... <laughs> You know, I actually uh, made a video and sent it to someone yesterday, and I was like, the shit I find myself in, the relationships I fucking foster and form in my life and the things I do, it's just, I don't know. But then I thought to myself, who am I to judge what's normal? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you're normal and somebody else right. is crazy, but they're crazy as right. you're normal. Uh, I, but the easiest by far thing that's the difference between last season and this season that I'm healed mm. and I'm really fucking happy. I'm happier than I've ever been in my entire life. I'm secure, confident. I love the life that I'm living right now. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of it. And I know a lot of people will judge me for it, but that's okay. And that's another thing. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what you think about me. I don't give a fuck what you think about my ways. If you're not laying in my bed, or paying my bills, you have no say. Exactly. Right? And I truly mean that. And that's what freedom is. Yep. Anybody that lives in fear or scare what anybody thinks about them, you're not really living, if you ask me. And I am fully healed, living, 40 free and fucking thriving, baby. I, mean, I think that's a, <laughs> like a big thing for me. Like people, I was like, oh my God, you're so blunt. You, ha you don't have any filter. I'm like, no, I just don't fucking care. Like right. if you're fucking up, I'm going to tell you. If yeah. you're an asshole, I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't care who you are. Like, I have no power. And I've never had a big power distance between me. So, I mean, it, it is. It's a very freeing mm -hmm. way to live. I'm just living very authentically, too, for so many years. And I think a lot of my listeners can relate to this. I stifled who I was. I oh, dulled yeah. my sparkle. I didn't I didn't share how sexually I wanted to be. You know, and I've always been this way. You know, even when I was in college with pawn star i mean that's i was letting my freak flag fly and all of a sudden it was like well society doesn't need to calm down and get married and have babies and live happily ever after shit ain't like that it yeah, doesn't no. have to be like that um but i i you know i let that pressure get to me for a while and now <laughs> the roof's been blown off motherfucker oh yeah you are the tornado and the yes. house is destroyed yep. yes hurricane adrian <laughs> category five so last question what do your listen listeners have to look forward to in season three you know, I think, well, first of all, I do want to mention, I will be back Tuesday, July 12th. I know that feels like forever away. Oh my God. I know. What, what will they do? I know. Uh, and I think season three, I really want to start branching out and getting other guests on. Like I have a divorce lawyer that's going to come on and that's, that's going to be great. good. I want to have a gynecologist come on. Um do another episode with Urban Dictionaries, have a sex toy episode again. Um, I don't know. Almost, I want to bring more value to my show. I know I share a ton about my life and it's wild and fun and whatever, but I want to bring more value. That's what I want to do next season. So yeah. And July, Tuesday, July 12th, I'll be back. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at midlife craving because I'll still share stories. I'll still go live. You'll see what's going on with me there, but I will say I am looking forward to the break. It's I'm looking, nice. I'm looking forward to the season three photo shoot. I know we got to do that. Yes. I, I, I'm I'm ruminating. Okay. I got good. Some good. Ideas good. Going. Okay. I don't know if I can do the red lipstick though. I will. I'm going to convert you. I don't know. I'm, red I'm, and me just aren't a thing. I don't understand though. Like, <laughs> just just do it. Just uh, I'll try. Although, I just we don't just say, see I me in red this, lipstick. I told this bitch I was like, just make sure it has blue <laughs> undertones and not orange. And she's like, I don't know what that means. I remember Zach. I'm a man. I'm literally a man. Well, a so I even sent her pictures and she's like, I don't get it. What's the difference? I'm right. Like, it's fucking red or it's orange. There's, I don't understand what you're talking about. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Bro, bro, <laughs> dude. <laughs> okay. So for the first time ever, I'm finishing with my five minute orgasm. You, you're finally finishing last. I know. You know, <laughs> my five minute orgasms where I unload the latest in my life. And it's actually really fitting to be here at the end. You it know, is, yeah. so uh, it's just a quick little update and I'm not going to give too much away, but I've had a little blast from my past. It's not Prince Charming. So put that out there. <laughs> and, you know, 
we both have found ourselves in different places in life, uh, happier, healthier. And, you know, like a lot of time has gone by, but one thing is for sure that elusive connection between us hasn't gone away. So we've been spending time together and Hey, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but I have to tell you, okay. Oh God. So we fucked. Right. And it was like one of the hottest moments I think I've ever had in bed with someone. I forgot how big he was. Right. And so we start really slow. I mean, it's always perfection and he pushes inside of me a little bit and then he pushes in all the way. It was so deep. I gasped. Oh, wow. And he goes, remember me? Oh my God. Oh, wow. (laughs) (sighs) Yes. Yes. I remember you very well. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dimmy, Dimmy, Dimmy. Anyway. So a lot of hot stuff, a lot of good times. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. So what is this mystery man's name? His name is... I was about to set you up for a season finale cliffhanger. (laughs) The audacity, I know. But instead, I'm going to quote Bueller here and say, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you can miss it. And as fast as Mr. July came blazing back into my life, he is already back out. And this time for good. I decided I'm going to share about this because I learned some extremely valuable lessons. I'm not even going to make you wait that long. Okay. (laughs) So Memorial Day weekend, it's going to be a free fireworks show. On Friday, May 27th, I'm going to drop a bonus episode and Uncle Mo's coming back. Boom, boom, pal, baby. (laughs) And I'll just leave you with this. Do not ever settle or lower your standards. Never ignore your instincts and intuition. Stay true and align to your core values, those motherfucking core values. Only believe actions, not words. And most importantly, most important of all, always remember who the fuck you are. 